Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I'm back with another What Sold from last week video. In today's video, as every other week, we are going to go over sales that sold on eBay and Poshmark. If you guys are new here, I'm an online reseller. I go to thrift stores. I find items that are undervalued and I flip them on sites like eBay and Poshmark to make a profit. So like I said, every week I come on and share what's selling for me and share some specific items that you could also look for while you're at your local thrift store to flip online for a profit. I'm really impressed with last week. So as you guys know, if you watched the last What Sold video, we had a record breaking week. I mean, we killed it. It was almost 8,000. It was like 7,900-ish. Um, this week, I I was going to be really surprised if we reached 7,000 and we just barely made it. So we're going to dive into those sales and show you now. But I don't look for this to always be the case. I think we just had a really good week. I think I'm going to fall more in the six to 7,000 mark, but still really, really awesome sales. All right. So everything that you see that happened on the screen, as well as the items that I pulled were sold between March 19th through the 25th. That is a Sunday through a Saturday, and that is how I calculate my weeks because that is how the platforms calculate their weeks, and it's just really easy to pull all of these numbers for you guys. So in total, I sold 250 items for a gross sales total of $7,088.48. Super happy with that. I honestly was hoping we would reach over 7,000 and we just barely made it. I don't know if I can maintain that as I've already said, but hoping to stay close to that at least, I'd be happy um, going over 6000 even. Average sale price was $28.35. Estimated cost of goods based on an average buy cost was $1,000. And then estimated net was $4,203.64. Um, on eBay, I sold 140 items. On Poshmark, I sold 110. Gross sales on eBay were almost $4,800 with an average sale price of $34.24. And on Poshmark, my gross sales were almost $2,300 with an average sale price of $20.86. Still working on bringing this average sale price up and having some more regular price sales if you've been following along all of these videos. Still working on that and it's definitely coming together. So I'm gonna dive in to the sales. I wanted to lay some groundwork really quick before I dive into these just to make these videos easier. I realized I could just be showing you the start time on eBay, which is the only platform um, I talk about how long the items have been sitting for anyways. So if you're interested in knowing how long this item was listed for, I do now have the start time at the top on the eBay items, which will be right here. Um, and then when I talk about sending out offers to watchers, that is something that eBay allows you to do even if you don't have best offer turned on. So you can see on this listing, I just had it listed for a direct price. Someone could not send me offers. However, I could send offers to anyone watching the item. Um, so if you're not familiar with eBay, that's what I mean when I say offers to watchers. I usually send out somewhere between 10% or 15%. Um, lately, I've been leaning towards 15%, um, but it's at least 10%. So Let's dive into this item because this was a really fantastic sale. This is a Johnny Was LA kimono. And if you're not familiar with Johnny Was, here is one of the labels. They have several lines within Johnny Was. They're kind of like Ralph Lauren in the sense where, you know, Ralph Lauren has Lauren Ralph Lauren and Chaps by Ralph Lauren and Ralph Lauren Sport and things like that. So it is worth learning what their labels are because some of them are not as clear cut as this. Um, but if you see JW, it might be Johnny Was. Definitely want to keep your eye out for Johnny Was and all of its lines. Their kimonos, in my opinion, are what they're known for. However, I think they're more known for their like multicolor bright embroidered ones. This one was not the case. This one was a velvet black all over embroidered kimono, but these are actually doing pretty well. And like, I'm not going to pass up Johnny was, you know, I talked about this in um, a recent video, but this was actually at a new rack that a bunch of resellers had just gone through. 
and no one got this. I don't know if they didn't know what it was or what, but I was so happy to snatch that up, especially in a size 1X and new with tags. Crazy good finds. Like who is leaving this stuff behind? I don't know. I paid $4.89 for this. I listed it for um, about $200. And it ended up selling on an offer to watcher for $169.93. Crazy, especially for an item that a lot of people had just passed over. So definitely want to keep your eye out for that. Johnny Was was not something that I knew about when I was a newer reseller. Um, and honestly, if I was a new reseller and I knew the name Johnny Was, but I saw this tag, I might not know what it is. So wanted to share that with you in case you were unaware. Next up is something I got in wholesale. I guess that's another thing I should have said. When I say wholesale, um, what I mean is not liquidation or anything like that, but I'm actually purchasing items from another reseller right now, and that's what I'm calling wholesale. They are thrifting items and selling them to me in bulk, but they're all handpicked pre-owned items the same way that I source for items. So when I say wholesale, that is what I mean. This is an item I got through wholesale. This is a pair of Alden men's Oxford shoes. And if you're not familiar with this brand, I would definitely get familiar with it. They make men's dress shoes and they retail and resell for a ton. Really good sell through rate as well. Um, and really any men's shoes that say they're made in England, you might want to take a look at because those tend to be the ones that are very high quality. So not much to say about these really nice pair of dress shoes. Um, these do have kind of an interesting sizing. So if you do get them, you might want to look up a little bit of information about what these mean. I'm not going to get into it because to be honest with you, I have to look it up every single time. But even with that little bit of extra research, it's definitely still worth um, spending the time to because the profits are so good. I paid $5.44 for the pair, listed at $99.92, and it did sell for full asking price. Um, some of them you can get even more than $100 for, but I would say $100 is a pretty good, um, pretty good deal for a pair of these pre-owned. Next up is an Everlane leather jacket that I almost left behind at the thrift store. This is an extra, extra small which is one reason that I almost left it behind. And it also had some marks despite being new with tags. So I had a dilemma <laughs> when I was there because it was Everlane, high retailing brand. It was leather, it was new with tags, but very small size and some flaws, which you can't necessarily get out very easily in leather, if at all. Plus it was new tax, so do you really want to risk, you know, trying to wash it out and then ruining it? So I, I had this dilemma at the thrift store. They wanted $9.99 for it, even with that flaw. I decided to go ahead and get it, knowing that I would probably sit on it due to the smaller size. But it did end up selling within a few months for an offer of $72.57, which I thought was pretty good. $10 into 70, I will take it all day long. Um, but just wanted to, I guess, provide a little backstory on this of some decisions that I made at the thrift store. Cause I do think, you know, looking back, that would have been a mistake to leave that behind. This is something you definitely want to keep your eye out for. It is uh, Y2K men's baggy jeans. This is the brand Paco. Um, some other brands that do really well are like Jinco jeans, J-N-C-O, um, anything really in that Y2K era, but Paco and Jinco are the ones I know, I guess they're the most well-known to pick up as a bolo. These had some embroidery on the back. They were definitely that vintage Y2K style. Um, and when you have jeans like this, a good keyword you might want to use is Y2K, baggy, and hip hop. All of those seem um, to do pretty well. This one did have a small stain. I got it for $6.99 at a thrift store. It ended up selling on an offer for $38.16. Um, this one, I feel like we sold it and then had to relist it. So I don't know if that means anything to you guys, but I think the sizing was off when someone tried it on. Um, but really popular item. 
and I think did sell twice very quickly. This is a J. Crew item. I'm starting to show some of the J. Crew items that are selling for me because it is a brand that I come across pretty often, and I feel like you guys probably do too. And I love looking for little niches within brands that are pretty common that I know that I can pick up and make great money on. So this would be one of those items. J. Crew men's uh, military utility jackets and specifically the ones that have this label. If you see it, definitely worth getting. We paid $8.99 for this jacket. It was called an A22 Type G 38 military grade. That all came from the label. Um, but this one was a more rare one, in my opinion. Uh, we sold this for $56.89. It did take a little while to sell. I think I originally priced it a little too high, uh, but still great return on investment once we dropped the price. This is a very niche item. This is a Woolrich men's vintage button-up shirt. Like, that's it. <laughs> um, Nikki actually came across this. This is not something that I would have thought to pick up, um, but she did a little bit of research and found that this is actually a bolo. It is a Woolrich men's multicolor uh, striped button-up shirt and very retro-looking. I would definitely keep your eye out for these. Again, not something I would have thought to get, but apparently do really, really well. Um, we paid $4.89 for this. It sold for $53.88. Um, it did take a couple of months to sell, but still profits on a pre-owned button-up shirt. That's pretty good. Next up is a Lily Pulitzer piece. I paid $4.89 for this. It's just a tunic top, but Lily Pulitzer, we pick up almost everything in. Even the Target collabs do really well for us. And larger sizes in Lily definitely bring up the value, as you can see here in this top. This is a size large. It was called the Willa tunic top, very popular style. Uh, we picked it up for $4.89. It sold on an offer to watcher for $48.36. And all the Lily stuff that I listed in winter is now flying. So just something to keep in mind um, as your listing items really consider seasonality. This is a pair of men's Lululemon extra large pull on sweatpants. I don't have, this is a really blurry photo. <laughs> I don't have much to say about this other than men's Lululemon performs extremely well. And for a long time when I was a newer reseller, I didn't even know that men's Lululemon existed. So I wasn't looking for it. Um, but it does even better than the women's stuff. So if you're a newer reseller, Lululemon does make men's stuff and it is worth looking for in the men's department because um, you can make some really, really great profits on this. We sold this. I don't know if I said I paid $4.89 for these. It sold on an offer to watcher for $42.44. This is a great brand to look for in the shoe department. It is Corky's. Here's the brand. Um, not to be confused with, I think it's spelled K-O-R-K-Y-S, which is different, um, but cork dash ease. And these are like a comfort but stylish shoe brand, and they have really high quality leather items. These are just a pair of open toe wedge, I would have called them booties, but technically the style was Barrett wedge sandal. I paid $4.89. We ended up selling them on an offer for $40.42. Um, this brand can take a little bit to sell. However, it always sells for really great profits, so I love picking it up. This is the brand Ishakti. This brand performs really well for me. However, sometimes they have custom made items that don't have a size tag and I try to steer away from those ones. However, the Ishakti dresses in plus sizes that do have the size tag like this one does, this is a 1X, um, I do look up. This one I think was extra special because it was a bird print dress and I noticed that their novelty prints seem to do better. I got this in wholesale. I paid $5.26 uh, per piece in that wholesale order. This ended up selling for $42.44, which is an offer that I sent to watchers. This is also something you want to look out for during spring and summer. They are Tommy Bahama maxi dresses. 
This one's just a size medium, but really pretty print, very coastal blue. Um, I paid $5.99 for this. We listed it for $44.92, and it did sell for our full asking price. Tell me Bahama women's stuff is something I don't pick up very often, but their midi to maxi length dresses perform really well for me. This is a denim wear brand I would definitely keep your eye out for. It is Mother, Mother Jeans. This one was called the Rascal Slit Flip Short in a size 27. I also got this in wholesale. I paid $5.26 for this piece and we listed it for $44.93. It sold for our full asking price. This one sold very, very quickly. Um, so definitely a brand of both jeans and jean shorts that I would look for. This is kind of like a bread and butter for me. I have sold this particular brand and this particular style for years. They are canvas boat shoes by the brand Margaritaville. And honestly, they're pretty easy to come across. This one I found new with tags, new without tags, but outside of the box. However, they did have a small spot on the top, but were otherwise in really great condition. Um, I paid up for these maybe a little too much, but I got my money back and then some, but I paid up for them because I knew they'd be such a quick flip that I could double my money pretty quickly. I paid $10.99 for these. They ended up selling for an offer of $33.94. So 11 into about 44, not too bad. And like I said, made my money back very, very quickly. Next up is the brand Public Rec. Definitely want to keep your eye out for this in the men's department. This one's kind of tricky because the tag is not usually on the back center of the pants like they are for most men's pants. It's actually usually on the inside of the front of the waistband. So something to keep your eye out for. The brand is Public Rec, like I said, REC. And these are a pair of men's maroon uh, jogger sweatpants. I pick up pretty much everything in this brand, but their jogger sweatpants perform really well. They also make polos that perform really well. So definitely keep your eye out for this brand in the men's department. I think they only sell men's to be honest with you. Got this one in wholesale as well. I paid $5.26 for this piece and they ended up selling on an offer for $33.94. This is a Talbot's dress, another brand I do really well with in women's dresses. This one's a size 18W, so plus size dresses in this brand perform really well. If they're not plus size, I try to stick to the longer lengths to get more profits. Um, this one was a really pretty multicolor print. We paid $4.50 for this. It sold for $33.94. Next up is a pair of men's cool pants. K-U-H-L. This is a brand I look for all day long, any time of the year. Men's, women's, doesn't matter. It performs extremely well for me in the pants department. This is a pair of men's silencer pants. They had ripstop to them. Let me see if I can find a close-up of the ripstop. I don't think I can. It's basically like a crisscross uh, pattern and the way that it's woven together it's very unlikely that it's going to rip, which is why it's called rip stop and people like them. Um, but definitely want to keep your eye out regardless of rip stop for the men's cool pants. But if they do have rip stop material, um, definitely might want to put that in your title. Here it kind of is. And maybe um, consider doing your comp that way because you might be able to get more for your item. Got this in wholesale, paid $5.47 for it, listed for $39.93, and it did sell for our full asking price. This is a brand that does not sell well in everything. It is La Mer, L-A space M-E-R. This one said La Mer Lux, which indicated to me maybe I should look it up, and it was also a size large, and it had this beautiful... Uh, contrasting coral print to it. Very beachy, reminded me of Lily Pulitzer or Vineyard Vine, something like that. Um, so because of that, I looked it up and I found that this brand does not have a 100% sell-through rate. However, um, the ones that are selling are these nicer, like beachy prints. And so I took a chance on it and I'm glad that I did. I paid $4.89 for this. I listed it for $39.93. 
and it sold very quickly for our full asking price. So if enough factors are involved, I would say go ahead and get it. This was a larger size, very Lily Pulitzer-esque, um, and again, a higher retailing brand. Next up is another wholesale item. I picked these up for $5.38, and these are a pair of Hi Hi or Hey Hey, much older label, anthropology brand. And the reason I wanted to pick these up was because they were a wide, like very wide leg baggy pair of pants. The style's really in right now because of the Y2K era. And you can see I put all that, all those keywords in my title. Um, we listed this for $34.93. It sold extremely quickly for our full asking price. Makes me think maybe I could have listed it a little higher, but definitely a brand you want to look for um, in this particular style. Next up is another J. Crew piece. Like I said, I'm trying to share some J. Crew pieces. This is a size extra large midi dress. It was tiered, very beachy. Um, so for all those reasons, we grabbed it. I also got this in wholesale. I paid $6.47. It ended up selling for $32.92, um, but definitely a style I would keep your eye out for. This is Athleta. Definitely worth looking into, especially in the wider leg pants. Anything that's like straight leg, boot cut, or flare right now is really popular. Uh, this was picked up at the bins. We listed it for $34.93. It did sell for our full asking price. Um, and this is something I'm keeping my eye out for right now are the wider leg pants in the athletic wear brands. This is Trina Turk. I have a love-hate relationship with this brand. It retails for so much, but the sell-through rate is not typically there with this brand. However, I have found that in Trina Turk, the beachwear and swimwear items perform pretty well. This is a strapless maxi dress. It was like a, a beachy knit dress, and we listed it for $29.82. I paid $4.89 for it. It did sell for our full asking price, um, but... This is a brand, like I said, it really depends on what the item is, but I have noticed the beachy or swimwear, their bathing suits do well um, in this brand, so keep your eye out for those. This is Vineyard Vines. It's very similar to Lily Pulitzer um, and J. Crew in the fact that it's like pretty preppy and nautical, beachy almost. This I picked up a while ago, kind of like that Everlane jacket. It was a very small size and I wrestled back and forth with it. This one was also new with tags, just like that uh, J or sorry, Everlane jacket. This was a size extra, extra small. It had all of the information there for me. It was the San Katie dress. I ended up picking it up because it was so cheap for $3.50. I listed it pretty high originally, which is why I don't think that it's sold very quickly, but we have since dropped the price it and it ended up selling for $32.67. Um, I knew I was going to sit on this one and I did. I think I should have priced a little lower originally to get that smaller size moving. However, in any other size, this would definitely have been a great pickup. Next up is a brand I wanted to share with you. If you weren't familiar with it, it is Alaskan Hard Gear. This brand is sold at Duluth, and this tag actually even says by Duluth. Um, but this brand performs pretty well for me, especially in pants and shorts and sweaters. We paid $4.89 for these shorts, and they ended up selling for $28.99. Uh, pretty good return on investment for a pair of shorts, so I did want to share that brand with you. This brand, you guys, I come across this all the time, but almost always leave it behind. But one of our sourcers uh, had been picking this up, and I learned that this is actually pretty a, a pretty decent brand, but it has to be like a larger size. This is a size 3X. I don't know if it's Quacker Factory or Quaker Factory, but I'm sure you guys have seen that label before. This was a palm tree print uh, top. 
again, a size 3X, which is why I think it sold so quickly. We paid $4.99. It sold for full asking price of $24.93. This brand makes very embellished um, sweaters, shirts, tops, all that stuff. I think it really depends on the size, again, um, but they're pretty easy to look up with this one. We just looked up Quaker Factory Sequin Palm Tree 3X and was able to find it pretty quickly to know if it was worth picking up. Next up is Ally Miles. This is a great brand to pick up in larger sizes. They're very artsy, login looky, very like simple tag. And we paid $4.39 for this. This ended up selling in a bundle with a couple other pieces. I estimate that this piece with the discount they got for the bundle ended up selling for about $30-ish, maybe slightly higher. Um, but we originally listed it for $37.93. I do think it would have sold closer to that $38 um, had it not been in a bundle. So a brand worth looking for. Next up is Spanx. I have really good luck with this brand. I think this is the first time, though, we've ever found joggers. So these are a pair of women's joggers. They're called the Air Essentials Tapered Pants. Definitely keep your eye out for those. If you're not aware that Spanx makes joggers, you might not even take a second glance at these, but I wanted to share those with you. We paid $4.49. They ended up selling uh, pretty quickly for our full asking price of $29.93. Here is another J. Crew piece. Again, just sharing what's selling well in a brand that I come across all the time. This is a 100% cashmere size extra large pink short sleeve sweater. And I used to never pick up short sleeve sweaters because I guess I thought, what's the point? <laughs> you know, a sweater is supposed to keep you warm. Why short sleeve? And to me, they just weren't very popular. But I'm actually finding that here lately, this is a very popular style depending on what it is. So might want to keep your eye out for short sleeve sweaters. I paid $4.99. It sold very quickly for my full asking price of $29.93. And last one on eBay before we jump on over to Poshmark. This is a brand I pick up almost everything in. It is packed and they make organic cotton pieces. Like that's pretty much all they make. They do men's and women's. These were a pair of men's waffle knit jogger sweatpants. Um, they did have a little bit of wear to them. We paid $4.49. They ended up selling, however, for a full asking price of $26.88. So um, just shows you how strong the brand is that even with some wear, they're still selling pretty quickly and for full asking price. So keep your eye out for that. Moving on to Poshmark, I pulled this ahead of everything else because it was also packed. This is a women's pair of cropped leggings, size extra large, pretty plain item, but we paid $4.89 for it and it sold for $25 also pretty quickly. Here we go again with the wide leg pants, also knit pants, knit pull-on pants seem to perform really well if they're like cashmere merino wool or something like that. Um, I've been able to sell some brands that I don't normally pick up if they're in the style, so to keep your eye out for that. This is a pair of airy extra large knit pants, super wide-legged, again, very on trend right now. I paid $4.89. They sold for $30. Next up is the brand Rails. If you go on their website, their stuff sells for like hundreds of dollars, so a very high retailing brand. However, um, the sell through rate for me is not usually there, but I am willing to pick it up and just price it lower to get it moving quickly. I thought this was a really pretty dress. It was called the Terra Texture Floral Mini Dress. This was a size extra small, so I did expect it to sit a little bit. Um, we paid $5.99. It ended up selling for $35, but Again, Rails is something I'm probably going to pick up no matter what because it does retail for so much and just price it a little bit lower. This one is a very high sell-through rate brand. It is G4. And G4, it's like G slash 4 for anyone listening, is a golf brand. They make men's and women's items and I pick up everything every single thing in this brand. It sells so quickly, has a high sell through rate and sells for crazy amounts of money, even pre-owned. Um, I'm used to selling the men's polo shirts and their shorts. 
Um, I think this might even be the first woman's item I've seen. This is a knit polo, kind of an open knit one. Um, this sold very quickly for $40 and it was $4.99 at a thrift store. Definitely want to pick up G4. This is a menswear brand that I like to get. It is Mizzen and Main. These are a pair of men's um, just dressy pants by Mizzen and Main, size 32, pretty decent size. Um, cost of goods was $3.99. We ended up selling them for $40. Definitely keep your eye out for that brand. These were an interesting sale. These are a pair of Nike kids, boys. Um, the style was called Black Lunar Force one duck boot um, and a size seven youth. I originally thought that these were women's because when I did a Google lens, that's what it was telling me. However, after I actually looked into it, into the shoe and saw the size, it ended up being a youth size. Um, long story short, I picked them up thinking that they were women's. They were not. And because of that, I had to adjust pricing a little bit. I wasn't really sure what to price them for, but they did end up selling uh, for a decent amount. I originally paid $12.99 for them, again, thinking that they were women's. I'm really happy that they sold. They did take a little while to sell, but they ended up selling for $57, which is pretty good, 13 into 57 but I was a little nervous about these, thinking that I wouldn't be getting my money back anytime soon. Um, but it just goes to show that even some youth, uh, more unique Nike pieces can sell, but definitely want to keep your eye out for the more unique Nike pieces. All right, next up is a wholesale piece. This is Wilfred Free. Wilfred, I believe, is sold at Aritzia. This is a size extra small merino wool crop sweater. And Wilfred does not typically have a high sell-through rate in the resale market, at least for me. But I did notice that these oversized crop sweaters were performing really well. Um, so I did get this in wholesale. We paid $5.44 for it and sold for $34 on Posh. This one was kind of a mistake. <laughs> this is Love Shack Fancy, which is a fantastic brand to pick up. I've never found just like original Love Shack Fancy. This one is a Target collaboration, which always significantly decreases the value and also means that there's probably a lot of it out there since it was sold at Target. So this is Love Shack Fancy at Target, size two, but it was new with tags, which is the reason I got it. Maxi dress. It was called the Estelle Maxi dress, very cottage core, very pretty dress. Um, I paid $16.99 for this, $17 just because of the Love Shack Fancy logo, and I would never found it before. Um, but looking back, I do think that was probably a mistake. I have been sitting on this for a long time. I am glad that it just sold for $45, which definitely I made money on, but I was sitting on this for so long that that $17 could have been uh, better spent elsewhere. Um, so really keep an eye on your target collaborations. You have to know that they're actually going to sell and don't get too excited just because it's a brand you've never found before. Next up is a menswear brand. I would pick up in anything. It is Flint and Tender. I've mentioned, um, before we found a bunch of these pants recently and they're all flying off the shelf for us for really good money, super high sell -through rate and everything in this brand. So definitely want to get it. Um, we paid $3 for this particular pair and they sold for $40. Next up is a pair of Tory Birch Flats. It's kind of hard to tell in the pictures, but these were absolutely destroyed. They had so much wear to them. I almost left them behind at the thrift store, but then I remembered that someone had said that some people will buy them damaged just for these little logos. So I looked it up with flaws, still had a high sell-through rate, and I just adjusted my price accordingly. I paid $5.99 for these destroyed pair of flats. Um, we listed, I think, for $35 and ended up setting, accepting an offer of $29. Those sold very, very quickly. If you find Tory Burch that is not as flawed as this, I would definitely get it because you can get like two, three times 
even four times your money on these pre-owned. Um, but even the flawed ones, you might consider getting still if the caps, the logo caps here are still in good condition because they do sell. Next up is a pair of Nike men's pants. Um, I wanted to show you these because Nike joggers perform really well in the men's department, but especially if they are an interesting color. These were a pink tapered leg, I think they were called these solo swish pants. Um, these actually did have some staining as well, so they did have a flaw. And they ended up selling even still for $42. So just wanted to throw that out there. More unique colors in men's joggers can perform really, really well and are more sought after. Um, and we paid $4.89 for those. This was another wholesale item. This is Dolce & Gabbana. Um, I was so excited to receive this in wholesale. I had a hard time looking this one up. It, it was very hit or miss on the comps on eBay. I tried to do a little bit more research and I kind of had to make up a price based on similar comps. Um, from what I could tell, the vintage Dolce & Gabbana men's Hawaiian shirts were going anywhere from like 35 to 65 so I priced mine on the higher end of that spectrum just because I thought mine was a pretty cool print um, and I'm glad I did we paid 547 it ended up selling for $55 and pretty quickly as well um, maybe I priced it too low but like I said I did do comps and very similar ones we're going for about that range um, so that's what I listed mine for but might want to keep your eye out for that vintage label this is another Lily Pulitzer piece. It is new with tags. Um, just wanted to show, you know, how much you could get for a Lily Pulitzer piece if factors are there. This is called the Darla dress. It's kind of a shorter dress, but again, it was new with tags. Retailed for $218, very multicolor, pretty print. Um, we actually paid $19.99 for this dress, $20. Bucks. I'm so confident in this brand. $20 bucks is like a solid pickup for a new Batag's dress in this brand, um, and it ended up selling for $120. So definitely keep your eye out for that, and don't be afraid to pay up for it if you know you've done your comp. Here's another pair of cool uh, men's bottoms. These are a pair of shorts. These were the Patina Dye cargo shorts. We picked these up. Um, from wholesale for $5.26. It sold for $29. I won't say much more about this, but just wanted to show you another cool sale. This is a Patagonia Women's Capoline Cool graphic t-shirt. I pick up Patagonia graphic t-shirts all day long, but this one actually was a little bit more special or maybe a more recent style because of the Capoline Cool. Really pretty graphic on that. This sold so quickly. We got this in wholesale for $5.47 and it sold for $28. Um, so even graphic t-shirts in Patagonia can usually flip for me for $25. So keep your eye out for those. And Lassie is a brand that performs really well for me in spring and summer. It is Task, T-A-S-C. I pick up like every polo in this brand as long as it's in good condition. And it always flips like within weeks very surprisingly. This is a yellow, pretty plain organic cotton polo shirt, size medium, nothing too special about it other than it, it has a really good following. Paid $4.29. It sold for a full asking price of $30 on Posh. All right, guys, so that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you're not already, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell. If you do that, you'll be notified every time I post these videos, and I try to post them every single week. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.